Hello, my name is Dave Muma, and I'm the Transit Director for the City of Janesville. And I'd like to welcome you to the Rock County Historical Society and a special display for the 125th anniversary of public transit in the City of Janesville. It was October of 1885 when the Janesville City Council approved a charter for the Janesville Street Railway. And in July 24th of 1886, the first horse-drawn streetcar hit the rails, and from then until now, there has been continuous public transit service in the city for the last 125 years. This morning, we're going to show you just a few artifacts from the 125-year history of our system. Of course, horse-drawn streetcars were typical in small communities around the state of Wisconsin in the late 1800s. They were really the first form of public transit that cities like Janesville had. However, it wasn't long before the latest technology of the time, the electric streetcar, made its appearance here in Janesville. So in 1892, the entire system was turned over to electric streetcars with the first runs occurring on May 30th of that year. Throughout the 1890s and into the early 1900s, streetcar development within Janesville continued and in 1902, the Rockford, Beloit, and Janesville Interurban Electric Railway arrived in town, connecting the three cities in its title. One of the first artifacts we have this morning is memorabilia of that time, a tie and spike from the RB&J, which was taken out of South Franklin Street in Janesville. The RB&J used standard railroad construction with wooden ties and uh, iron spikes to hold the rails to the ties. And their terminal in downtown Janesville is located on South Franklin Street, not too far from where the YMCA is currently located. And this was recovered from South Franklin Street back in the late 1980s. Moving on, in 1910, ownership of the streetcar line switched from the locally owned Janesville Street Railway to Union Gas and Electric of New Jersey. Why in the world a company from New Jersey would invest in a streetcar line in Janesville, Wisconsin has all to do with the business of the time. But when Union Gas and Electric came to town, they did a major recapitalization of the line. And one of the things they did was install new rail. And this piece of rail down here in the display case dates to 1910 which was the last time new rail was put into the streetcar system. Uh, this particular piece of rail was removed from the intersection of North Washington Street and West Memorial Drive in approximately 1980. It's important to note that North Washington Street was really the site of the original streetcar run in 1886 and remains to this day a part of our transit system here in Janesville. Finally, we see a couple of later shots from the streetcar years. First of all, the Corn Exchange transfer point in downtown Janesville, which most people nowadays associate with the Doughboy Memorial and the memorial to the Janesville Tank Company. But for many years, the Corn Exchange was the focal point of the transit system in Janesville. And in this picture, we can see two gentlemen walking towards one of the Bernie-style streetcars that operated the last years of streetcar service on the system in the 1920s. And speaking of the Bernies, we'll talk about a little innovation that came to public transit in Janesville in 1920. And moving over to the Johnson Registering Fare Box. Now, most of us nowadays are very familiar with the fact that when you get onto a public transit vehicle, you put your money in a fare box that doesn't look a whole lot different than this 100 years later. But it's, this was a major revolution in the public transit industry at the time it was introduced in 1909 because it allowed the streetcar companies to replace the conductors on their streetcars and that conductor's wages with a mechanical device that would receive and count the fares on the streetcar, meaning that the motorman could both operate the streetcar and collect the fares, something that required a second individual, the conductor, in the years before that. 
So this was a great revolution and it was introduced in Janesville in 1920 with the onset of the Bernie style streetcars. Streetcars continued in Janesville until 1929, and at that time the system was sold by Union Gas and Electric to the Wisconsin Power and Light Company. Now, conventional wisdom would say that the electric company would continue operating electric vehicles. However, WPNL realized that there were real savings to be had by introducing buses and replacing streetcars. And when you think of it, in order to change a streetcar line, you have to lay new tracks, string new wire, and it's a very capital intensive uh, operation. In order to change a bus route, you simply hand the driver a new set of instructions. So WPNL went forward with buses, and in July of 1929, WPNL introduced the first bus service into Janesville. On July the 18th, 1929, the first buses in Janesville rolled into town, operated by the Wisconsin Power and Light Company. These U-model yellow coach buses, and yellow coach, by the way, later on became the GMC truck and coach division of General Motors. So from the very beginning, uh, Janesville had General Motors built buses operating in the community, uh, provided the first service here and were in service up through the 1930s. WPNL marked their routes with the Orange Line sign, which was their brand, and operated buses not only in Janesville, but throughout southern Wisconsin in places such as Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, later on in Beloit, and with inner city service going to places like Monroe and Fond du Lac and Madison from Janesville. Uh, WPNL was one of the largest public transportation operators in the state, and like a lot of electric utility companies, got into the transit business early and stayed in the transit business until the mid-1940s. Bus tokens, of course, are a staple of the business, and our display here shows a number of bus tokens over the years, which include early J tokens, which actually go back to the streetcar days, uh, Union Gas and Electric and the Janesville Traction Company, from 1910. These were followed by the W tokens issued by, obviously, Wisconsin Power and Light and between the years of 1929 and 1944. The J token returned in 1944 after WPNL got out of the city bus business and the locally owned Janesville Bus Company took over. All of these tokens were actually used by the city after the city took over the service until the mid-1970s as fair, and many people still find old J and W bus tokens uh, in dresser drawers and, and other places when they're cleaning out the homes of elderly relatives, and we do still get people bringing them in wondering if they're worth anything, which unfortunately they're not other than the memories that are involved. Bus tokens continue to be used, of course, even to this day, and part of the display shows a comparison of the old J bus tokens with the ones that the Janesville Transit System currently issues. It's probably a very, very early uh, example of being green about something that you use in your business. The tokens are infinitely reusable and uh, replaced uh, during my time here at JTS paper tickets, which were one use and throw away. Uh, the system continued to grow over the years. WPNL had bus replacements throughout their term of operation. Uh, a number of years ago, a citizen brought in a picture here from 1935, which shows three buses that were added to the fleet in that year. They were Chevrolet buses, and while we don't know for certain that the chassis were built here in Janesville, uh, it's entirely possible that that's the case. Moving on through the years, we talk about a particular individual who was involved with uh, Union Gas and Electric, WPNL, and the city uh, in operating transit systems for over 50 years. This gentleman's name was Ernest Kleimenhagen, and Ernie hired out as a streetcar motorman in about 1925 with Union Gas and Electric, changed over to a bus driver with WPNL in 1929, and continued his career through the Janesville Bus Company and city ownership 
finally retiring in about 1975. I knew Mr. Kleiman Hagen personally when he still came to our Christmas parties in the 1980s, and it's interesting to note just by happenstance that this week uh, his wife Beatrice passed away at, at the age of 98 in the same week that the transit system celebrated its 125th anniversary. Public transit systems generally are very concerned about safety and the image that they portray to the public about their safety. And in speaking of Mr. Kleimenhagen and his history, you'll see here a number of the safe driving awards which he accumulated over the years. The little steering wheels indicate a higher level of safe driving award. And a large insurance company back at the time called Marcal, for the M that you see on those awards, issued these to the drivers of their policyholders as an encouragement and an inducement to continue to drive safely over the years. And the drivers uh, wore these awards with great pride. In some cases, even under a union contract, it meant more money for them uh, to earn a safety award. This bus driver uniform that was worn by Mr. Kleiman Hagen during the years represents a style that was very common in the industry uh, from the 50s through the 60s and into the 70s, the uh, gray-blue military-style uniform jacket. When the city took over the operation in 1952, the triangular Janesville bus department patch was worn on the shoulder of the uniform, and employees still wore Janesville Bus Company cap badges on their military-style caps, and Mr. Kleiman Hagen's cap badge number five uh, is shown here as well as part of this display. So an uh, interesting story about one individual who was part of the history of public transit for 40% of the time that public transit has been operational in the city of Janesville. As the years went on, the city made many capital improvements and the, Janesville was actually the first municipality in the state of Wisconsin to take over the ownership of its bus system and that occurred in June of 1952 following a public referendum when 3,045 people voted yes to the city takeover compared to a slightly over 500 no's. And so Janesville became the first community in Wisconsin to own and operate its bus system as a municipal entity. And it has continued, of course, uh, under city ownership and operation until this day. In the early 1970s, the system went through its first expansion after almost 20 years of reductions following the takeover by the city. And a new system of bus stop signs was initiated at that time with the sign with the orange colored lettering uh, being one of those that was first placed on the routes in 1973. These signs could be followed on the routes until the mid-1990s when all were replaced by the next style of bus stop sign which shows the large block JTS uh, with a picture of the bus on it. These were first introduced in the mid-80s when the system was rebranded from the Janesville Municipal Bus System to the Janesville Transit System. And this followed a major change and a major decision by the Janesville City Council that was made in 1976 as to whether the city was even going to continue to have a bus system. Uh, at that time, a consultant study was conducted to see if there was sufficient demand for the city to continue to operate a bus system and the study revealed that yes, there was the demand in Janesville, however, some basic changes had to be made if the system was to be successful. The study allowed the city to apply for a federal grant, which resulted in the purchase of 19 new buses, expansion and renovation of the garage, purchase of the first passenger shelters on the system, and a number of other improvements. And with all of this updating, it was decided to also invest in a marketing study, and that resulted in the change of the brand to the brown and gold color scheme and the big block JTS letters. Along with the change in brand and the bus stop signs on the street and new buses, it was also time for new uniforms for the bus drivers. During the 1970s, 
the old traditional blue military style uniforms were done away with for something that those of us who lived through that period remember, and that was the burgundy blazer. <laughs> and bus drivers wore burgundy blazers with blue pants and blue shirts and blue ties. Uh, those didn't prove to be very, well, very usable by the bus drivers because the long coats were uncomfortable to wear while they drove. So we opted to back up just a little bit to an Ike style jacket, which didn't have the long coat tails. And so from the early 1980s into the early 2000s, JTS drivers wore these brown Ike style jackets uh, with tan pants and tan shirts. And this was the system identity then for uh, approximately 20 years from the early 80s through the early 2000s. Uh, while the JTS brand was first introduced. And it served us well during that period of time. But as time goes forward and innovation continued, it was time for the next big change in the transit system. And that was the introduction of a new downtown transfer center for JTS. Planning for this project actually began in 1982 with the first suggestion that we needed something better than what was universally referred to as the pad, which was located behind the old Greyhound bus depot on South Franklin Street. And it took, however, until 1996 and another federal grant uh, until we could actually do the design and commence construction of a new facility on South River Street at Court Street. This was a facility that actually sat, historically, on the site of the old WPNL garage, which had been the site of the first bus garage when WPNL came to town in 1929. Uh, it was decided to purchase the entire five plus acre site and to turn it into a park with a bus depot carrying out actually some of the historic John Nolan plan for green space along the river in Janesville. And this serves an, up through today as the focal point for our system. All bus routes arrive at the transfer center and uh, depart from there and uh, all routes are timed to operate in and out of that transfer center. Along with the new transfer center, it was also time for new buses to replace some of the vehicles which had been in service since 1979. And so a new bus fleet arrived in 2002 and with it again the opportunity for a rebranding of the system. During the time the city of Janesville had adopted what has universally become known as the squiggly tree logo. And so that was woven together with JTS and a new sign bearing the green colors, the squiggly tree logo, and of course the universal identification of a bus stop began to be added to the system in the early 2000s. And the complete conversion to the new bus stop signs was completed in 2010. In the early days of city ownership, budgets were tight and the mechanics at the Janesville Municipal Bus System innovated to keep costs down while still providing usable appliances to help with the transit service. What we have here is a fare box dating from the 1950s, and as you can see, it is literally a wooden box put together with scrap lumber by the mechanics. This box contained a one pound coffee can and a plastic funnel in the top. So people would drop their money through the plastic funnel. It would end up in the one pound coffee can inside the box. The box was secured with a hasp and a padlock, and this in turn was fastened to the vertical stanchion on the bus. It served the purpose. It certainly is not high tech, but it did the job for a number of years, particularly on secondary and school routes for the Janesville Municipal Bus System. Along with the rebranding of the system in the early 2000s, including new buses, the new green color scheme, new bus stop signs using the squiggly tree logo, it was time again for another change in bus driver uniforms to replace the military style Ike jackets of the 1980s and 90s. Uh, in 2002, a committee of drivers got together to design new uniforms for the system, and the result was the current day 
uh, black and gray uniforms with the JTS logo on the sleeve that have served our drivers now since 2002 and will for the foreseeable future. After almost 15 years of planning and over a year in construction, the great day arrived on June the 1st, 1999, when the new transfer center was dedicated at South River and West Court in downtown Janesville. And it was decided to pull out all the stops and invite all the people who had helped get this project through. And the picture you see here and the letter and the red ribbon all came from the dedication uh, and the ribbon cutting for the new transfer center. And in the picture you will see federal and state representatives including U.S. Congressman Paul Ryan, U.S. Senator Russ Feingold, who are, of course are both Janesville natives, and State Secretary of Transportation Charles Thompson wearing the light colored suit, along with city council members, members of the city administration, Forward Janesville, and others. So it was really a festive occasion uh, with over a thousand people in attendance for the dedication of what would become the hub of the Janesville transit system for years to come. A century and a quarter of history is a long time in any community, particularly in the Midwest, United States. And as we tie up 125 years of history for the Janesville transit system and its predecessors, we not only look to the past, but we look ahead. The biggest project that the JTS currently has on the horizon is the replacement of our current 50-year-old operation and maintenance facility. Uh, which most people would refer to as the bus garage, was something that will take us forward for the next 30 to 50 years. The city council in 2005 gave the authorization to proceed with this project, and we are currently amassing funding uh, for a rather large construction project that will end up costing somewhere in the neighborhood of seven and a half to eight million dollars to meet all of the new technological safety and environmental requirements for such of a, a facility and to provide something that will be expandable and usable into the future. So as we look at our past, as we honor our past and the people and the events that have spread across the previous century and a quarter, we look forward to the next 50 years and the Janesville transit system continuing to serve the citizens and the community of Janesville with reliable and safe public transportation service.